So this is the final video in the 2016 probability distribution exam. And this is question 3b. Okay, so have a read of the question. Just pause the video and actually have a read of what it says. And then have a good look at the graphs. Think about what they're saying. And hit play once you've done that. Okay, so the main points are we've got two surveys done at the supermarket. One is before um, the supermarket's been redesigned and the other's after. And we've been asked down in question I to identify which set of data has less variation in rating scores and to support that with statistical reasoning, which is something that we should do anyway, right? Okay, so when you just look at these visually, what do you notice? Well, the first thing I notice is that the after group has two really tall bars, and the rest are really short, whereas the, the before group has four bars that are reasonably similar in height. So what's that saying? So what is the height on these, what do the height on these graphs mean? It means the proportion of people. So if we look at the people that gave at a rating of five in the after group, that's just over 45%. So over 90% of people surveyed after the redevelopment rated it as either 4 or 5. So very good. Whereas before, there's quite a big spread. And a reasonably high proportion of people rated it as everywhere from 1 through to 4. Therefore, we can say in the after group, there is more agreement, greater agreement between people. Most people agree it's pretty good that means less variation. Whereas in the before group, there's more disagreement, and therefore more variation. So let's write that down. So which group had less variation? The, there is much less variation in the ratings by people surveyed after the redesign compared to before the redesign. And the evidence for that, evidence means we're referring to the features of the graph and usually referring to numbers as well. This is shown by the fact that more people in the after group gave similar ratings to each other, with over 90% rating it as 4 or 5. Whereas in the before group, there is, an, um, there is a reasonably similar spread of ratings from 1 through to 4. Well, the ratings from 1 through to 4 all have reasonably high proportions. So I've backed it up with numbers as well. And we'll just look at the marking scheme for that question. So, for, for merit and excellence, because this is the first part of a two-part question, for merit and excellence, you've had to say well, for excellence, the ratings for the after survey identified as having identified as having less variation and supporting evidence is provided. And that's the same for merit as well. Um, and for you only get achieved if there's insufficient supporting evidence. So supporting evidence, what were the things you could do? Um, well, they've talked about the standard deviations of ratings before the um, uh, for the after survey being smaller, so you could calculate the standard deviations or at least estimate them using a um, graphics calculator or using a formula. Um, but it says here, for supporting evidence, accept standard deviations estimated from the graph or calculated, or just by describing the visual distributions, which is what we did, e.g. after has over 90% of results on scores of 4 and 5. So the visual approach is, is fine. and. Um, we really would rather you're actually thinking about the data than just plugging numbers into a formula because that shows a greater understanding of the statistics involved. If we wanted to work out the standard deviation, um, then um, which I don't actually recommend for this question, but if you wanted to, um, basically how you do it is you go menu, stat, and then into list one you put all the ratings, so 0, 1, 2, 3 to 5. And in list two, put the proportions, which you can't really see exactly, but you just would do your best, and they would be they'd be a bit tolerant with that. So um, I see that the proportion for zero is looks like it's about 
0 0.02 and the proportion for 1 looks like it's about 0 0.18 and for 2 looks like about 0 0.23 here and then for three is 0 0.25 and for the ratings of four it looks like about 0 0.26 and for rating of five it looks like 0 0.06 okay and then i need to tell the calculator to use list two as frequencies because um and that means that it works for proportions as well so um, set and frequency instead of being a frequency of one we need to change it to being the number in list two so I go f2 for list then type two for list two and then go exit to take me back click one there because there's one variable and the mean is 2.73 for the before group and the standard deviation is um, the third number from the bottom where we've got the sigma sign so 1.2478 would be the standard deviation for the before group and if you do that for the after group as well um, you will find a, a smaller a smaller value and then you could say you could use those as evidence the fact that the standard deviation for the after group is smaller than the standard deviation for the before group but like i say um, i don't think that's necessary and um, i've just showed you so that you have that skill if you need it okay um, so this answer here would gain full credit. Um, now, part two. Discuss if it would be appropriate to use a Poisson distribution to model the ratings for the before survey. Support your answer with statistical reasoning. So let's actually go through the requirements for using a Poisson distribution. So we use the Poisson distribution when counting the number of occurrences of a discrete event within a specific continuous continuous interval of time or space. Things like number of lollies per liter of hokey pokey ice cream, number of earthquakes per year, that's excluding aftershock sequences, um, population density, which is the number of people per square kilometer, house burglaries reported per week in Christchurch. And unlike the binomial distribution, there's no, uh, there's no fixed number of trials and no upper limit because it's in an interval. An interval of time or an interval of space. Poisson distributions occur when things being counted happen at random. That means there's no way of predicting them. Independently, which means the occurrences of the events are independent of each other. They don't affect each other. That's why aftershock sequences and earthquakes um, wouldn't be well modelled by Poisson because they're not independent. They're part of a, a sequence of earthquakes. Um, proportional, the frequency with which the event happens needs to be proportional to the size of the interval. So if you double the interval, you double the number of occurrences on average. And simultaneous, we have to assume that the events can't occur simultaneously, so we can't have two or more at once, or in the same spot. So the key things with Poisson is that we're dealing with counting of events over an interval. So are we dealing with the counting of an event, how many times something happens, per interval? when we're talking about these ratings. No, we're not. The ratings are just people's opinions on something, aren't they? So, no, starting with, always start by stating the obvious, no, Poisson would not be an appropriate model for people's ratings about the supermarket. And the reason is because, so this is because ratings Rating values represent categories of people's opinions, whereas we use the Poisson distribution to model how many times um, an event occurs over an interval of time or space. Okay, so we've clearly answered that question. We've said no and we've said why. You couldn't have 
you wouldn't talk about um, a rating of three, meaning that something happened three times. So it's nothing. Ratings are nothing to do with frequency. They're just to do with what people's opinions are. Doesn't mean that you couldn't get a plus on distribution model that looked similar to um, the distribution from a survey of ratings. You could get that, and so it would look like a good model. But the problem is that you wouldn't be able to trust it to always model a situation involving ratings well. And the reason is because plus on mathematically is not built around um, a, a system of categories of ratings. It's built around um, how often something happens, so frequency is what plus on is built around. So you wouldn't, you just wouldn't use it for that situation. Looking at the marking scheme, um, it says here under excellence a clear argument of why a plus on distribution, so why a plus on distribution would not be a suitable model for the ratings of the before survey is presented. And if we go down to what the model answer, it says it would not be appropriate to use the plus on distribution to model the ratings for the before survey. The rating scores are not rates. They are not a comparison of account to a measured variable. Additionally, the ratings have to be between 0 and 5. They are upper bounded. So that was the point that I didn't think of when I wrote that answer. Because plus on, remember, starts at 0, but it has, it has no fixed upper limit to how many times something happens. And here, we have a maximum of 5. So, it wouldn't be appropriate for that reason as well. Note, accept other valid arguments for why a plus on distribution would not be a suitable model. Okay. To practice more of these questions, um, a good idea is to do more past papers. The way to get to the past papers is... So to get there, if you go to the NZQA website and to do that you just type in um, nzqa.govt.nz and then forward slash mathematics or whatever subject that you're after and that will take you to the mathematics resources under NZQA. So then if we scroll down to where it says resources for externally assessed standards and in this case we want level 3, examination papers and exemplars. And if you go to that first screen, it only has the papers, it doesn't have the marking schemes. So what you do is you find the standard you're after. So we scroll down until we get to probability distributions, this one here. And we want to go view all documents. That's very important. And that gives us both the papers and the marking schedules because you want to get used to how they're marked as well. And so 2016 paper was here, 2015 paper is here, and then 2014 and 2013, they're all there. And then if you go down, the marking schedules are here as well.